What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here doing another Marvel Select figure review on the Marvel Select Cable. If you're trying to pick this figure up, you can get a big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. Standard Marvel Select packaging, we get a big X for X-Men right over there, and then on the side you can see this really cool image of Cable, and then on the back you can see the figure, Zombie Magneto, Amazing Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man, there's this long read-up, if you want to go ahead and read that, go ahead and pause it now. Alright, let's get to it and crack this thing open. So here's Cable out of the packaging and this figure has a lot of accessories. It has some really cool paint apps, really cool sculpt, but unfortunately it is missing a lot of articulation. From the waist down it's fine, but from the waist up it's really difficult getting him in a firing pose over here. It's just, you can see his head's not really even looking in the right direction. Yeah, it's just a little off anyway. But he does come with a lot of accessories and a base, so that is pretty cool. So as usual, Diamond does pretty good with their bases. I really like all the paint details tail throughout over here. You got Strife's cape all torn up and got some nice black wash right there. We also get this nice silver paint for Strife's helmet over here which looks a little out of scale comparing it to the Marvel Legends Strife head. And looking over here you can see some more rocks and brick and stuff like that so it looks pretty good. Very nice subtle details on this metal shoulder pad over here. The cable comes with five different guns plus this knife over here. I really like the silver paint on these. They're very bright. You can get a little bit of hint of black paint on them too. He has two of these actually. They're identical. I wish there was like a yellow paint or something like that right there there towards the center of all these blasters, but no, nah, it's alright. We get this little piece right here that actually helps store it on his back. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but again, some nice subtle black paint throughout here. I wish that was painted over at the end. Doesn't look too bad. You get this huge mama jamma right over here. This thing is just really badass looking. Damn, that is just really cool. I'm digging it a lot. Very nice subtle black overspray over here looking really cool. Pistol does look cool. Nice paint right in there as well. It has its own little holster, which actually has some nice paint detail on there. You just put it right in there. And this actually fits into a bigger holster, which actually stores these bigger guns. Then you could go ahead and put this right in there. The other side you get the same kind of holsters, so there's no other smaller gun to place in there. This is always going to just be for one of these. And he has storage on his back right over here for his knife. Just painted nicely as well. You get this dark blue right there and then black around it, so it's nicely sculpted too. Now all the weapons store into Cable's hands nicely. It's just that this left hand has a little bit of a tighter grip than the right hand, so keep that in mind. I think Diamond selected a great job on the head sculpt for this figure. I really like it a lot. A lot of nice paint apps over here. I love the yellow and orange right there for the left eye. The right eye has some nice blue paint apps. I love the scar right over there. His 5 o'clock shadow does look a bit intense or else he was sticking his chin in some poo or something. I don't know. It's tricky to see. We have some nice highlighted areas over the gray. Uh, get a little bit of flesh tone coming out right over there. This side looks pretty good too. Really love all these textured details right here. It's got all these little canisters and stuff looking really really cool. Digging that. A little extra bit of plastic right there but not a big deal. Nice paint detail throughout. You can see all the little stitching right there. I'm really digging this a lot. Looking at the back piece. We already saw that little sheath for the knife. This arm has some nice skin tone to it. Nice paint apps. And I'm not sure if these are supposed to be arm hairs or those are air pockets that got stuck in the mold but it's there. Anyway you get this nice wash coming over the blue right on this side and then the metallic arm looks great too. I love the silver paint apps and we get some nice black and brown mixed in there too making it look all worn and everything. Comes all the way through underneath here. And the legs look pretty good on the figure too. Nice paint variation over there. Nice textured detail on the holsters over there. And these metallic boots look great. Looking at the bottom, there's no treads, but we do get peg holes. Back of the figure, you get some grandpa butt. Now, if you remember the awesome articulation that we had gotten on the Marvel Select Thor figure that just came out, this is nothing like that. Uh, the head could barely move left and right. Uh, yeah, these pads around here really limit that left and right movement. You do get some neck pivot in there. Uh, looking, he can look up, not really, and he definitely cannot look down due to this little X plate right there. So that's a bit unfortunate. The shoulder joints can move outward. They can rotate. No, no, they can't really rotate forward. Now you do get an elbow bend. This figure really needs a bicep cut right there because you can't really bend the arms around. So it makes it very difficult. I mean, he has that 90 degree bend or almost 90 degree bend right there at the elbow on both sides. Uh, he does 
have these ball jointed wrists where they kind of move in and out, but they just mostly rotate side to side. He has a waist joint. He has a DCUC gaping crotch pits that move outward quite a bit. He can kick forward quite a bit and not really back so much. He does have an upper thigh cut right there. Double jointed knees that bend in pretty good. Then his ankles move down. They can move up. And he has this interesting ankle pivot. It does swivel like a pivot, but it's kind of weird just the angle that it swivels in. So this figure stands at about seven and a half inches tall. And here's the select cable compared to our Marvel Legends cable over here. So you can see the differences between these two figures, both looking pretty cool. And here's cable compared to Marvel Select Deadpool. Thank you, John 3.0. And these do not fit into scale with each other at all. Cable should definitely be taller than Deadpool over here. And it looks like Deadpool is actually just a little bit taller than cable. And here's cable compared to the new Marvel Select Thor figure. I guess the scale doesn't look too bad when you see him compared to mommy and daddy over here. <laughs> And here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. So whether or not I can recommend this figure just depends on how much you want articulation in your action figures. This guy's articulation is very disappointing, but the paint sculpt is very good. So it just depends on what you like. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my video. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button right over there. Check out my last two videos right over here. And don't forget to go to MarvelousNews.com for the latest in Marvel-related news and a photo gallery of images from this review. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. You could put this...